Back at home. Is Yona still doing okay? We've been going out all this time, but it's like we're not spending any quality time with our daughter. That kind of um, worries me too. Where is the mom? Is she not alive anymore? We don't really know anything. Oh, I still didn't get wheat for you yet. <laughs> hi there. Yona? Oh, uh, hi, Dad. How are you feeling? I'm okay. Sometimes it still hurts, but that fish medicine you got helps a lot. Good. Um, Dad? Are you gonna stay here tonight? I'll stay with you. Yay! Dad's gonna stay home tonight! Easy, Yona. You'll hurt something. Heh! <laughs> I don't care! I'm just happy I get to see you! It's late. You should go to bed. Okay, night, Dad. <laughs> so the moment she gets us to stay here, we're staying- We're staying home now, but she's going to sleep. Oh! I wonder if that really changes anything. I hear a voice. I squint and see a boy standing before me. His hair is silver, his skin is pale, and he stares up at me with hard, glassy eyes. Soon, his lips begin to move, but no sound comes out. What is he saying? I can't hear him. I can't hear him. I can't hear him. I can't hear him. I can't. I can't. I can't. I try to leave, but something about the boy holds my gaze. I watch his face, expressionless, as his lips slowly flutter. What is he trying to say? Wait, it's a phrase. I can almost make it out. It starts with an S, and then there's an E. I can almost see it now. The letters begin to fall together, one after the other, faster and faster. Sealed verse. Oh my god. It's a sealed verse. The thing I'm looking for. The key to saving my little girl. I stare at the boy with renewed ferocity, trying desperately to make out his next word. Dream. Dream? What? What the hell does that mean? The lips move again, faster now. I can't follow them. Damn it, I can't make it out. I want to scream. I want to tear the walls down around me. But instead, I force myself to be calm. I can do this. I can do it for Yona. Slowly, ever so slowly, I parse out the letters that make up his final words. Forest of Myth. A premonition from a silver-haired boy that there may be a verse in the forest of myth. Whoa, that was a messed up dream. I never thought I'd be hunting sealed verses in there. Oh, morning, Dad. Hey. What's wrong? You look all tired and you have these weird black circles under your eyes. It's nothing, I just... I had a strange dream, and I didn't sleep very well. Oh, I have weird dreams all the time. I know. Actually, I had a totally weird dream last night. Did you now? There was a boy, me, and we were playing this game together. I'm getting the feeling that probably Yona's dreams are more important than I'm making them, making them out to be. What kind of game? It was called Guess the Word. I think he made it up, because I've never heard of it before. How did it work? Um, well, the boy would move his mouth, but no words would come out, so I had to guess what he was trying to say. It was hard. I wanted to play hide-and-seek, but we had to play his dumb game instead. What did he say? I don't know. All I could figure out was dream and the forest of myth. But he said he'd be back, so I gotta study. Then I can figure everything out and win! You're gonna help me study, right, Dad? Yeah, sure. Ominous? How'd it go today? Damn, I still don't have the wheat! Okay, we gotta get that wheat in town. Hmm...
You appear lost in thought. This frightens me. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. Come on. I need to go ask Popola something. Same routine every day. Hmm. Everybody important in this game seems to have silver hair. I don't know if that means we're all related or what. Hey, was there an old lady here just now? Oh, random person? Okay. <clears throat> What's up, Popola? Oh, <laughs> hi, Wallace. I just got a strange letter in the mail. Dearest Popola, I hope this letter finds you well. I am writing in hopes of bringing to your attention a certain dream issue. Dream issue? Of concern. Regarding recent events in Dream the Village. Uh... What? I was hoping I might be... Dream able to get your advice dream on the matter. Uh... Recently there have been dream reports dream dream of a certain dream 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 dream... Empty... Curse... Evil... Words... And... Someone... Uh... Okay. That is certainly one bizarre piece of writing. Yeah, it's strange all right. Who's it from? The mayor of a small village in the Forest of Myth. It's a wooded area up north. The Forest of Myth? They're a bred and talkative group of people. Something like this is very out of character for them. I have a bad feeling about this. I'll check it out. Um, you will? But... Don't worry about it. I've got business there anyway. Oh, well, all right. Thank you. Oh. Well, it looks like I have my work cut out for me. Although that... Uh, I don't know. That was kind of scary. October 28th. I was tired today, so I stayed home and hid in bed. I could still hear Devola singing from somewhere, somewhere though. Listening to her always makes me happy. Hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty ominous thing. The thing that we're hearing. Okay, is there anything I can finish here so far? Quests? We got the the one with the berries and stuff. We're not doing any of the seafront ones. Oh, the mutton! I never brought it back. I don't even... The tavern keeper? Oh, the tavern, I guess. Okay, sure. Let's make a quick trip back to the tavern then. Hmm. It feels like we're getting somewhere, but not... I don't know, everything is just... A little mysterious right now, and when you don't really have hope for this world to begin with... It's very... Nerve-wracking. It's cool how every time we come back here... Oh, we never organized books for Popola, what the heck? Yeah, every time we come back here, we can hear Devola sing. No, I don't want a different job. Uh, I should probably... Finish the one- Oh my god. I need to finish the one in the library. Hello. Yo. Got your ingredients. Oh, perfect. Now I just mix them up like so and... Presto. Grandma's old-timey digestive elixir. Since you've already been such a help, could you deliver this to my grandmother? She's at the fountain by the library. Okay, I'll get this to her as soon as I can. Fair enough. Hmm. It's a very pretty song. Oh. Hmm. Excuse me, but have you seen my son? I don't think so. Why? Something wrong? When I got home, I found a note from him that said he was leaving and to not look for him. What if he's left the village? Oh, if something happens to my little angel, I'll just die! Please, you have to help me. I'll pay you whatever you want. 20,000. My son shouldn't be hard to spot. He wears a very odd hat. You can see it from a mile away. Okay. Okay, if I find him, I'll see if I can convince him to come back home. We have no indication of which way he's even gone. I mean, alright, but 
It's not looking that good. Yeah. Okay, so the library organization one. I guess we should be doing that. Do we talk to somebody at the library? Yeah, because that the tavern keeper just now, they didn't even have a quest symbol on them. They're normally supposed to have that, right? Yo. Ma'am, we got something for you. Oh, what a nice young man. Now I can walk without pain. Oh, sorry. I thought this was for digestion. Oh, it is. See? Sometimes I eat so much that it hurts to walk. Anyway, here's a small token of my appreciation, young man. 2,000? I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, okay. Let's just finish up the, the library one then. Should have done this one a while ago. But I don't think I know who to talk to. I thought we just talked to Popola, but clearly that's not the case. Okay, who am I talking to here? You! <sighs> hey there, you mind giving me a hand with this? Sure, what's up? Popola asked me to organize her bookshelves, but it's kind of a big job. I'm hoping you can take care of a few of them. Here, this book goes in the second shelf from the left on the east side of the second floor. Second shelf from the left on the east side of the second floor. Second shelf from the left. Second shelf from the left on the east side. What the he Oh my god. East? Is this east? This is south. So... Second shelf on the... Here. That should do it. This was like a two... This was a 20 second walk and she didn't want to do it herself. Yo. I'm done with the first book. Third shelf from the right. Third shelf from the right on the south side. Hey. Yes? Aren't you all powerful? Can't you just... You know, use magic to zap this place into shape? The infinite power of Grimoire Vice is not to be used for such trivial tasks. I'm not asking for much. <laughs> you are the one so enamored with hard, honest work. That's the second one. I hope you don't have that many books. Oh my lord. I saw that Devola had a fishing quest. I don't think I want to do that one. Yo. Oh, wow, that's a huge load off my mind. It's always nice to meet someone else who appreciates the value of a good book, you know? Anyway, here's your reward. 500 gold. Garbage. <laughs> but it's fine. Alright, let's get going. Alright, so... We are going to the Northern Plains again. Do we have anything there? We could try riding the boar, supposedly. Although I'm not really sure how that works out. Well, we'll figure it out. Kinda. Almost forgot that she didn't want to come into the town. Hmm. Hello? Oh, wow. Wow. I forgot all the controls, but I'm sure we'll figure it out, too. Okay, so this time we are going to the Forest of Myth. If only I could figure out the controls for this again. I don't know the controls. I gotta go look up the tutorial thing again. Wow, they're not hurting my boar at all. I'm trying to figure out which button it is to walk faster, but... Oh! Get out of the way! Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Ow! Well, I suppose getting me halfway through is part of the challenge already. No, no, I want you to take me to the rest of the... God damn, you guys need to... Get out of here! Vara. Turn back. Turn back, boar. Yes. Yes, you need to like keep walking. Oh my goodness. I think this is a little bit high effort right now. 
trying to ride the boar. Are we good? Okay. No, if you just, just walk normally. <laughs> Sorry, Kaina, you'll have to walk. Okay, okay. Turn this way. Smooth sailing. From now on. Hopefully. Up. Oh, don't kill the sheep! No! Oh! Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, we made it. It sure is quiet here. Such silence bodes ill. There's trouble on the way. I'm sure of it. That's what I love about you, Vice. You're such an optimist. That's cheek. <laughs> Something about dreams here. Are there shades that interfere with dreaming? Hmm. I have a feeling whatever's happening here is probably related to the the dreams that me and Yona have been getting. Be where? Be where? The words. The words? What do you mean? Contagious words. Those who dream. Those who dream? Hold a moment. There's a strange new sensation in my mind. Vice's voice rose in a quizzical way. What's happening here? This is weird. Why is it suddenly narrating everything? Beware of the words, right? He just said that. It is not quizzical. What's going on here? The villager's body shuddered as he slowly opened his eyes. Perhaps we should start by asking this man. W who are you? I'm Welland. This is Vice. We heard something happened to this village, so we came to see if we could help. The villager stared at Welland and Vice. If you can speak to me, I must have caught you in my dream. How's that again? The villager explained. In the past weeks, a mysterious disease called a death dream had spread across the forest of myth. Those who caught it were cursed to fall asleep and live forever within the world of their own dreams. The village mayor had determined that the death dream was spread from person to person by spoken words. But before he could learn more, the disease took him as well. Ah. Uh. Vice stared at the mayor, his mouth twitching slightly. Now see here, he said. Are you saying that we have been absorbed into your dream? Um, well, yes, said the mayor. I think you have. Oh, crap, said Wallens. So that means we've caught the death dream? Before the mayor could confirm Wallens' suspicion, Vice exploded with rage. Ridiculous! Preposterous! Completely unfathomable on every conceivable level! I don't even recall falling asleep! The mayor attempted to take Vice's complaints in stride. That's just how the death dream works, he said, brushing aside the book's remarks. My remarks shall not be brushed aside, fool, and it would behoove you to remember that this world allows me to view all of its narration. The mayor twisted his mouth into an embarrassed grimace, then quickly changed the subject to who Wellens had seen, and what they had discussed since coming to the village. Something there must have caused you to enter my dream, said the mayor. A certain conversation, a specific word, something. Wellens and Vice racked their brains but could find no easy solutions. There were simply too many words to consider, too many random chatter, too many meaningless conversations. Oh. Rimmore Vice does not engage in meaningless conversations! The mere suggestion that Vice chose his words carelessly seemed to sting his pride. 
It does not seem to sting my pride, you bloated gas bag of a narrator. It has demolished it utterly. Irritated, Vice looked skyward, as if searching for answers in the heavens. I was doing no such thing. Just leave me alone already. The anger created by his harsh words bled over to Wellens like a contagion. Wait, said Wellen suddenly. Did someone just say contagion? Yes, I believe so. What of it? Well, the villager told us to watch out for contagious words, right? The mayor leaned forward with renewed interest, pushing a startled vice aside in the process. Well, he must have said something, right? Said the mayor. Some specific combination of words? What was it? It was about dreaming, or something that dreams, or... Oh, what the hell was it? A sheep? Cried Vice suddenly, blurting out the first thing that popped into his head. Into this head. The others stared at him for a moment before slowly shaking their heads. Uh, I guess Kaina is not affected right now because she hasn't said a thing. After a few more moments of thought, Wellens' face suddenly lit up. I remember, he said. Those who dream. That's what he said. I'm sure of it. At this, the mayor produced a thick sheaf of papers from his pocket. He flipped through them a few times before finally nodding his approval at Wellens. That sounds right, he said, as a stray sheet of paper fluttered to the ground. My notes also mentioned something about that. I bet it was the last thing you heard before you fell asleep. The mayor shook his head, his worn pencil stub tracing lines across a lone piece of paper. For the last month, I've done nothing but study the disease we call the death dream, he said. I mean, I'm the mayor, right? It's my job to protect the people from whatever comes along, but I never expected a couple of outsiders to start entering people's dreams. The mayor paused, a grimace crossing his face. I should probably be taking notes or something. Vice immediately fired back. I applaud the force of will it takes to research a disease in your dreams, he said. But perhaps we should bend your efforts to escaping this place instead of trying to understand it. The mayor's hand tightened around his pencil, snapping it off at the tip. I've tried to escape. From the very first moment I realized I was locked inside my own dream, I've been looking for a way out, but I don't think it exists. I mean, this is my dream, right? If there was an exit, I'd know about it. He paused for a moment, his unfocused eyes staring at nothing. My village was beautiful, he said to no one in particular, and it was filled with the most wonderful people you could ever hope to meet. But once this disease took hold, things changed. It's like someone took a sponge and soaked out all the color out of our lives. I just want us to be whole again. I want us to be free. The mayor's voice took on a note of steely determination. And I won't stop trying until it happens. Wallens nodded in agreement. Huh? Wait a second. I didn't nod. Why are you- Look, if we can be of any help, said Wallens, just ask. Oh, something strange is happening here. Whoever the narrator is, is directly affecting our actions. Now hold on, I did not just say that! Silence! cried Vice. The grimoire looked from Wellens to the mayor and back again, his face filling with confidence. Grimoire Vice's face is always confident, thank you very much! Now see here, mayor, you told us that nothing can exist in this dream without your knowing of it. But yet, you seem surprised to see us when we first arrived, yes? The mayor slowly raised his head, realization dawning on his face. Oh my god, he said. You're right! You're right! I had no idea you were coming! The human imagination is a limitless engine, said Vice, and dreams are the fuel. If you can imagine an exit, then it must be so. With your permission, we shall search it out. Thank you, said the mayor. I don't know how I can repay you. Payment is not required. We are as eager as you are to be done with this place. The mayor suddenly felt as if he could breathe again. 
He'd almost forgotten what it was like. Good luck, you two! He called out at the departing forms of Wellens and Vice. We're all counting on you! As Wellen slowly faded into the misty forest, the mayor was struck by a sense of deja vu. I saw this man once before, he thought. But where? That's weird. Am I- How long is this gonna last? Holy crap, it's like a visual novel now. Wellens' mood darkened as he trudged through the forest. Hours earlier, when the beauty of the place was still a new thing, He'd been confident they could get in, find the exit, and be home in time for dinner. But the deeper they went, the more the forest closed in around him. The mist made it difficult to see more than a foot in any direction, and moss-covered rocks seemed determined to twist his ankle. More than once, he'd been forced to steady himself on the rough bark of a tree, and his hands now left small trails of blood on everything he touched. Additionally, Vice was proving to be a spectacularly poor traveling companion. Unhindered by either terrain or physical effort, he spent most of his time urging Wellens to pick up the pace and grumbling about their slow progress. Finally, after Vice muttered something about legless turtles being more adept at navigating the environment, Wellens snapped. You know what, Vice? He cried. Go to hell! We're stopping. I need to rest for a few minutes before I throw up. Wellens leaned against a tree and tried to stretch the knots from his back. How can this stupid forest be so goddamn big? He muttered to himself. The moment the words tumbled out of his mouth, a cacophony of insects sprang to life. As if infuriated by his lack of respect, every imaginable form of buzz, click, and hiss roared out with a volume that rattled his teeth. Wellens snapped his hands over his ears and screamed to be heard. Vice! What the hell is going on? Wellens could see Vice's mouth moving, but he might as well have been shouting in a tornado. The insects screamed. The forest howled. And then, just as Wellens' ears seemed ready to tear from his head and go running for cover, the sound diminished. Hesitantly, Wellens removed the hand from his left ear and listened to the creatures of the woods. Three, three, two. I don't know what sound that is. Shock, shock. What? This is what's happening around us. As the insect symphony dimmed another decibel, Wellens began to detect patterns in the sound. This isn't random, he thought. It's not just white noise. It's something else. The insects weren't just calling out, they were asking a question. One with it suffers, two with it is ideal, three with it is dangerous, what is it? By my pages, is this a riddle? I guess so. This kind of thing happens in a lot of dreams, right? Maybe it's the key to getting out of this place. Then I leave it to you to answer. One with it suffers, two with it is ideal, three with it is dangerous, what is it? I have no clue. A secret. One person with a secret is suffering. Two with it is ideal, three is dangerous. A woman? One person with a woman suffers? Two with a woman is ideal? Secret sounds... Right. Inwardly furious that Vice had left the task to him, Wellen sighed and gave the only answer that made sense. It's a secret. Uh, right? The sound of the insects stopped as suddenly as it began. The forest undergrowth parted before Wellen's like a rippling wave opening a new path. These forest arthropods are making a road for us, said Vice with glee. Pleased at passing the test, Wellens moved on with new intensity. The path offered his body relief from the undergrowth, but gave even greater cheer to his mind. As long as they were on a path, their journey had a purpose. I guess the forest has accepted us, huh? Said Wellens after a bit. 
Voice spun around to face his companion. Do not mistake the will of this forest for some happy pet you can suddenly befriend. We have no idea where this path leads. As Vice finished speaking, the pair turned a corner and found themselves facing a clear forest spring. Smiling, Wallens picked up a small rock and sent it skipping across the surface of the water. Good heavens, said Vice. His surprise was understandable. Each time the rock struck the surface of the water, a musical note rang out. When the rock finally stopped moving and sank to the bottom of the spring, the ripples it left behind came together to form words. I enter through the window, but I break no glass. When night falls, I vanish. What am I? Absurdly easy, barked Vice. Now answer it. Sunlight. Wellens grit his teeth and try not to reach out and strangle his companion. He's right after all. This one is pretty easy. Sunlight! A plume of water suddenly burst from the spring. Sunlight filtered through the trees and reflected off the plume, creating a shimmering rainbow that spanned the entire horizon. In all my years, said Vice softly, I have never seen such a sight. Perhaps I have misunderstood the intentions of this place. Hey, look! cried Wellens, awaking Vice from his daze. There's a house or something over there. Glancing in the direction of his friend's extended hand, Vice saw a small cottage nestled among the trees. That's weird, isn't it, Vice? I mean, who would build a house all the way out here? Wellens walked over and pounded on the door. After a minute of solid banging, the door cracked open and a small man peered out. His body was cloaked from neck to toe in a large black cape, while his face was obscured by mist. Um, began Wallens, but before he could get any further, the cloaked man held up a hand and began speaking. I have four legs in the morning and two at noon, but I end the night with three. What am I? Human! Wallens tried to ask the cloaked man who he was, and what he was doing there, but he simply repeated the question. If we wish to engage this man in conversation, said Vice, it seems we must answer his riddle. Yeah, I suppose, said Wallens. Well, at least it's an easy one. A man. These? Doom. Well, I'm guessing it's a man. A man. Or, well, a human. The mist dissolved from the cloaked figure as he spoke a single word. Correct. With that, the man flung his garment aside, revealing his true identity. Y you're the mayor! cried Wellens. The small man slowly shook his head. I am not the mayor you know. Now listen to my words. Long ago, I saw a version of you that was not yourself. You saw... Wait, you saw what? I'm sorry, I don't understand a thing you just said. It will make sense in time. At present, I simply congratulate you on cracking the seal of the death dream. Now you must go to the man at the forest entrance. With that, the man turned on his heel and slammed the door behind him. As Wellens watched, mist seeped up from the ground and enveloped the cottage, erasing it from existence. When Wellens and Vice returned to the forest entrance, they found the mayor leaning against a tree. As soon as he caught sight of the duel, he sprang to his feet and scrambled over to them. Good gravy, he cried. You made it! You actually made it back! His left hand grasped Wellens's and pumped it so fiercely that it threatened to dislodge from the socket, while his right seized Vice by the cover and swung him through the air. By the heavens, stop shaking me, fool! We have not even told you if we were successful or not! The mayor smiled broadly and shook his head. I'm just so happy you're alive! I didn't think I'd see you again! Wallens withdrew himself from the mayor's eager handshake with a slight smile. We broke the death dream seal, he said. At least, I think we did. I don't think so, because if you did, why are we still looking at text here? The mayor's face beamed as Wellens filled him in on the details. 
When the tale was done, the three of them laid down on the forest ground and fell asleep. Wait a second! That's crazy! Why would you just lay down and go to sleep? This is one hell of a story. Cease your endless prattle and go to sleep, fool! Fighting against the rules of this place is futility itself. Wallens and the mayor obediently reclined atop the grassy earth. Have you forgotten? Continued Vice. It is words that control the death dream. Words that allow us to move from place to place. No matter how unnatural they seem, the words are absolute. Therefore, if the words tell us to sleep, then sleep we shall. And once we do, the story will continue. With that, the trio found their eyes growing heavy, their breath slowing. This is the first time, began the mayor. The first time I have felt tired since I was imprisoned here. His words were cut off by a loud, long yawn, and he remembered nothing more. They might have slept for an hour or a year. When they awoke, things had a slightly more real quality to them. The mist felt thicker, the leaves greener. It was clear that they had awakened from their dream. Oh! Wellen shook the mayor's shoulder gently. Good news, he said. We made it. Oh, wow, said the mayor in an odd voice. We did. I'm back. He blinked once, twice, as though not quite believing the sight before him. You two have no idea how much this means. The death dream had started to spread throughout our village, and I wanted to... Well, I thought I could figure out how to stop it, but I guess that wasn't the case. I must have caught the disease and become trapped in my own dream. The mayor started to stand then collapsed back to the earth. He stared at his legs as if trying to remember how they worked, then glanced at Wellens and shrugged. Without a word, the fighter reached down and pulled the mayor to his feet. Real life may take some time getting used to. A wry smile crossed the mayor's lips. You shall relearn in short order, I am sure, said Vice. For now, you should return to your home and rest. No, said the mayor. Swaying on his unsteady feet. No, I can't. Some of the villagers are still trapped in the death dream. I have to save them. The mayor slowly made his way to the divine tree in the center of the village, then bowed his head and prayed silently. This is a holy tree, he explained when the prayer was finished. It is the guardian of our village's history and memories. Superstition will only make our mission harder, muttered Vice. We should not put our faith in the gods. The mayor shook his head. Not the gods, the words. Legends say that our tree is home to a powerful magic known as a sealed verse. Wallens and Vice could not contain their surprise. It seemed the gold had been found in the most unexpected of places. I say, muttered Vice, this is certainly a stroke of luck. As the three of them said their goodbyes, Wallens mentioned the strange man who had given them the third riddle and the mysterious words he had left them with. I once saw a version of you that was not yourself, muttered the mayor. What in the world? Lost in thought, he stared into space for a long moment. You know, he said softly, this is going to sound weird, but I had a feeling I'd seen you before too. Wallens tried to keep a straight face and failed, but the mayor didn't seem to notice. Deja vu, right? Anyway, I figured it's just some kind of illusion created by the death dream. It probably doesn't mean anything. Wallens gave the mayor a nod and a smile, but inwardly, his thoughts were racing. There's something wrong about the mayor and his words. I wish I understood what the hell was going on here. That riddle would prove to be the most difficult one of all. Oh, thank you so much! Now I can finally return to a normal life. This is one of the most bizarre diseases I have ever encountered. I know, that's why I have to help the other villagers no matter what. Dark execution. Summon magical spikes from the ground to impale enemies. 
That... <laughs> that was a lot of effort. What are you talking about? My throat is like permanently dry already. Let me have a sip of water first. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. That was something. For a sealed verse, that didn't take much effort. Yes. All a touch too easy, if you ask me. It's almost as if someone was guiding us to this village. You think too much, Weiss? I don't think so. Is Kaina not here because we're inside a village area? I guess so. Wow, that entire string of events was just too bizarre. There's no way that was the end of that, though. No way. Yeah. 